Welcome to your complete beginner's guide to the DJI mic. We are going to be looking at what everything in the box is and does, your first steps and how to get started, a complete walkthrough of the charging case, receiver and transmitters, along with the settings menu, where you can adjust things like the recording levels to make sure you get the cleanest audio possible. We are also going to be looking at a few tips and tricks, like how to use the internal recording on the microphone transmitters, how to use the microphone to start or stop a video recording on your phone wirelessly, and what way to attach the microphone for the best results. If you would like to rewatch or rewind to any part of this guide at any time, I put timestamps down below to make this easy. Alright, let's get you up to speed on the DJI mic. Let's start by taking a look at what you receive and what's in the box when you purchase the DJI mic. And when you open the box, you will find two items. The charging case, which holds the transmitters, the receiver, and the mounting options. And then we also have this carrying pouch, which holds the microphone windscreens, and cables. Now the DJI mic bundle we are looking at comes with two transmitters, a receiver, and a charging case. However, you can also pick up the DJI mic with only one transmitter and receiver and no charging case should you wish. So let's first take a look at the DJI mic charging case. Now alongside being used to transport your DJI mic system safely, this case is also what you will use to charge the transmitters and receivers by connecting it to a power source with them inside. And when fully charged, you will get around five and a half hours of battery life from the transmitters. However, a really nice feature is the fact that the charging case itself can also hold up to 15 hours of battery power. This is great as it means you can keep the battery off your transmitters and receiver charged when on location without a power source by simply inserting them back into the charging case when not in use to use the power stored in the charging case to recharge them. When you open the charging case, the first item you will see inside is the receiver. And this is what you attach to your camera or smartphone to receive the wireless signal from the microphone transmitters. Inside the case, you will also find two wireless DJI microphone transmitters on either side of the receiver. And these are what records the audio and transmits it to the receiver. Now you can use only one of these if you are only recording yourself. However, the benefit of having two of these mic transmitters is that you can record two people at once, which could come in useful if you are recording things like interviews. And the nice thing is that you can either store the audio from both transmitters mixed into one mono track or using a stereo recording mode Store the audio from one transmitter to the left channel and store the second transmitter's audio to the right channel, allowing you to edit the audio from both microphones independently after the fact. And we will look at how you set this up later in the guide. Now, if you are only recording yourself, having two transmitters is also beneficial because if one runs out of charge, you can simply swap to the second transmitter straight away and continue to record. Now, these transmitters can be attached to yourself or the person you are recording in a few ways. On the back of the transmitter, you have this clip, and this allows you to clip it to the neck of your shirt, to your jacket, coat, or even to a backpack. But attached to the clip, you also get this magnet on both transmitters. Now this is really useful as you can put the magnet on the inside of your t-shirt and then attach the transmitter on the outside. And this is the way I like to attach the microphone when I'm recording myself. But if you wanted to hide the microphone, you could also put the transmitter on the inside of your shirt with the magnet on the outside and then all you have showing is this small black square. Additionally, there are a few other ways you can mount this microphone. So you could mount it to a tripod, such as this Osmo Action Mini extension rod. The top of this little tripod is magnetic, so you can simply snap the microphone to it and then set it on your desk. There are also third party accessories available, such as these handheld microphones, which are very popular on Instagram and TikTok videos. And with this, you simply push the mic transmitter into the top of it, place the windshield over the top, and now you have a handheld microphone, great for interviews. If you would like to pick any of these accessories up, I will put links to them in the description down below. Attached to the receiver by default is this hot shoe adapter. And by lifting up the flap on this adapter, you can then attach the receiver to the top of your camera. 
And the nice thing about this adapter is you can either have the receiver facing forward on your camera, which is perfect if you are in front of the camera and you want to see the information on the receiver screen, or you can actually remove it and then reattach it facing backwards. And this is useful if you are behind the camera operating it to again see the information on the screen. And here's a quick top tip. If you are removing your camera's hot shoe cover to attach the receiver, these little hot shoe covers are very small and easy to misplace, but you can actually place it in the hot shoe adapter slot in the DJI mic charging case to keep it secure and make sure it won't get lost until it's time to place it back on top of the camera when removing the receiver. Just above the receiver in the charging case, you will see these two additional mounting adapters. And these can be swapped out with the hot shoe adapter to allow you to attach the receiver to a mobile phone or device that has a USB-C port, such as the DJI Osmo Action 4. So the first adapter has a lightning connection for an Apple iPhone. And to swap the adapters, you simply want to pull the currently fitted adapter downwards from the bottom of the receiver until it is removed. And this can be stored in this slot in the carrying case when not in use. Then simply slide the lightning phone adapter into that same groove, making sure that the arrow on the adapter and the arrow on the groove are facing the same way. And once attached, you can then connect your receiver to your mobile device. And again, you can have the receiver facing either direction, depending if you are in front or behind your mobile phone when recording. The second additional mounting adapter for USB-C devices, such as an action camera, again attaches the same way. If you want to reattach the hot shoe adapter again, simply slide the current mount out and then lift the flap on the hot shoe adapter up to 90 degrees. And this then allows you to slide that flap into the groove on the receiver until you hear a small click to let you know it's attached. Another really nice feature of this carrying case is that no matter what adapter you have attached to the receiver, it can still fit into the case. So you can keep the adapter you use the most, always fit it to the receiver, and you don't need to continually take it on and off just to put it into the charging case. Let's move over and look quickly at the carrying pouch now. This is a little drawstring pouch, which carries the additional items that don't fit inside the charging case. And the nice thing is that this pouch and the charging case are the only two items you need to bring with you when using the DJI mic system, making it super portable. Inside the carrying pouch, you will first find two microphone windscreens, one for each transmitter. And when these are attached to the microphone transmitters, they will cut out wind noise. So if you are recording outdoors, I always recommend having these fitted. Next inside, you will find this camera audio cable. And this is what you use to attach a receiver to your camera by attaching one end to the out port on the receiver and the other end to the microphone in port on your camera. Lastly, you will find this USB to USB-C cable. And this is what you use to charge your charging case and the items inside it by attaching the USB-C end to the USB-C port on the charging case and the other end to a power source. Now, when you turn on the DJI receiver for the first time, you will have to go through an initial setup. So let's take a look at that now. And the first thing you will be asked to choose is your language, which you can do by swiping left or right on the touch screen until the option you want to choose is highlighted yellow. I am going to select English, and then you can continue by tapping the next arrow located here. Then you will want to enter the date, now this should already be correct, but if it's not, you can swipe up or down on either the year, month or day to change it. And once happy, again, tap the next arrow. On the next stage of the setup, you will be asked to set the time. Again, this should be correct, but if it's not, you can swipe up or down on the hour or minute to change it. And then once you hit the next arrow, you should see the DJI logo for a few seconds, and then you will get taken through to the interface and the initial setup will be complete. Let's now quickly go through the charging case, receiver and transmitters and take a look at what everything on them is and does, including all the buttons, controls and ports. Firstly, looking at the charging case, which is very simple. On the front, you have these four status LEDs. Now these turn on when you open the case up or have a power source connected to the case to show you the battery level of the charging case. So when you see only one LED lit up and it's blinking, that indicates that the charging case has less than 10% battery level. 
When you see one solid LED, that means the charging case has a battery level between 10 to 25%. And if you see two LEDs, that indicates a battery level of between 26 to 50%. If you see three LEDs lit up, that means the charging case has between 51 to 75% battery level. And lastly, if all four LEDs are illuminated, that indicates a battery level between 76 to 100%. Worth remembering that these LEDs are showing the battery level of the case, not the transmitter or receivers inside. So to see the battery level for them, when you open the case up, after a few seconds, the receiver and transmitters will automatically turn on. Looking specifically at the receiver, you will see the information screen light up, and then you can see three battery level indicators. The one in the middle is for the receiver, and the two on each side are for the corresponding transmitters. On the back of the charging case, we have a USB-C port, and this is where you attach a USB-C cable connected to a power source to charge the case, and subsequently the items inside, which takes around two hours and 40 minutes. Looking now at the receiver, and the first thing you will see on the front is the information screen. And this is where information such as the battery level for the transmitters, audio levels, signal strength, and more will be displayed. Now this screen is also a touch screen, allowing you to access menus and change settings by simply tapping on it and swiping around. And we will be diving into what all these icons mean and settings do later in the guide. On the right side of the receiver, we first have a power button. So when you open the charging case up, the receiver should turn on automatically. But if it doesn't, you can press and hold that power button to turn it on. When you put the receiver back into the charging case and close the lid, it will automatically turn off. However, if you wish to turn the receiver off outside of the case, you can do so by pressing and holding the power button again until the screen turns off. Now the touch screen on the front of the receiver is quite sensitive. And this could lead to you occasionally touching the screen by accident without realizing it when doing things like attaching the receiver to your camera, for example, and potentially accidentally changing settings. To avoid this, you can do something called locking the screen. To do this, you want to press the power button. But instead of a long press and hold like you would use that button to turn the receiver on, instead, you simply want to give the button a short press until you see the screen lock message appear on the screen. And this means that the screen no longer responds to any inputs, preventing you from accidentally making changes by touching it without realizing. Now to unlock the screen to be able to make changes again, you simply want to give the power button a short press again until the unlocked message appears on the screen. Next to that button, we have a USB-C port and using this, you can charge the receiver independently without the charging case by attaching a power source to it. So if you want a really minimal setup, you could actually leave the charging case behind and simply carry one transmitter and one receiver. On the left side, we have two ports. We have one labeled out, and this is where you attach one end of the supplied audio cable with the other end attaching to your camera's audio input, allowing your camera to use the audio being received by your receiver. We also have a port with a headphones graphic, and here you can attach a pair of headphones to listen to what you are recording. On the back of the receiver, we have this groove, which is for attaching the three different mounting adapters. And next to that, we have the charging pad with these four gold dots. This is the part that connects to the charging case when you insert it to allow the receiver to start charging automatically. So you just want to make sure when you're inserting the receiver into the case that it is the right way around so that them four gold dots line up with the charging pins in the case. Next, we have the microphone transmitters, and these two transmitters are exactly the same. So looking at the top and on the left side, you will first see the microphone, and this is what records the audio. Now around the microphone is this circular groove, which allows you to attach the windscreen over the top of it to cut out wind noise. To do this, you want to align the grooves on the bottom of the windscreen to the grooves around the microphone, and then simply rotate the windscreen to lock it into place. If you wish to remove the windscreen, you simply rotate it the other direction to unlock it, and then you can simply remove it. To the right of the microphone, you will see a microphone input port, and this allows you to attach an additional microphone, such as a lavalier. So what you can do is you can put this transmitter on your belt or back pocket, and then run the cable up inside your shirt, 
and have the lavalier attached to it. On the right side of the transmitter, you will find this linking button. So by default, the transmitters should automatically be paired to the receiver when you open the charging case and remove them. But if they aren't linked, there are a few ways that you can repair them. Firstly, you can try turning them on, removing them from the case for a few seconds, and then reinserting them into the case, and this should cause them to automatically relink. If that doesn't work, you can then try using this linking button on the transmitter. You want to press and hold this link button until the status LED starts blinking. And then on the receiver touchscreen, you want to swipe down to bring down the settings menu, swipe sideways to scroll across to the settings icon and once you tap into this you want to swipe across to the link device option then when you have tapped into this you want to press this link button and after a few seconds the link icon next to the transmitter on the screen should change to yellow and the status led on the transmitter should change to solid green to signify that the pairing has now completed now here is a top tip and a feature that not many people know about on the dji mic this linking button when your receiver is attached to a mobile phone can actually be used to start or stop a video recording on your mobile phone. And this is super handy because it means you can have your phone mounted out of reach or a distance away from where you are currently standing and start or stop a video recording without having to walk back over to your phone. Now below this linking button, we have the record button. One super useful feature on each transmitter is the ability to do a backup recording and store it to the transmitter's internal storage. This means that if there was an issue between the transmitter attached to you and the receiver attached to your camera, maybe you walked too far away out of range or there was an obstacle in between you and the camera, you can always have a clean backup recording on the transmitter's internal storage that you can then download from it and use. It also means that you can use the microphone without the receiver by simply recording the audio to the transmitter's internal storage and then pulling that audio track off it to use when editing. To start this internal recording, you simply want to press the record button and then you will notice that the recording status LED on the front of the transmitter will change to a solid red to indicate that the transmitter is recording internally. You will also see a small red dot appear in the receiver screen as well next to the corresponding transmitter. Then if you want to stop the recording, you can simply press that record button again and the recording status LED will turn off to signify that the internal recording has stopped. To the left side on the front of the transmitter, we have this second status LED. This is the system status indicator, and this will change different colors and blink in different patterns to help you see the status of the transmitter. So when this shows solid on, this means a transmitter is connected to the receiver and you are good to go. When it blinks slowly, this means the transmitter has disconnected from the receiver and if it blinks quickly, that means it is going through the linking process to the receiver. But it can also blink alternating colors between red and green if you are doing a firmware update. And lastly, if the light changes to a solid red color, this indicates that the transmitter battery is below 20%. Looking at the left side of the transmitter and we have this USB-C port. Again, this can be used to charge the transmitter independently of the charging case by attaching a power source to it. This USB-C port can also be used to download the internal audio recordings off the transmitter to your computer by attaching it via a USB cable. And then you will see a new storage space become available and you can open up the folder and find all the audio files inside. Also on the left side, we have this power button. Now, as mentioned by default, when you open the charging case, the transmitters and receivers should turn on automatically after a few seconds. But if they don't, you can use this power button to turn on the transmitter. To do that, you want to press and hold on it until you feel it vibrate and the green light on the front will come on, letting you know the transmitter is now turned on. To turn the transmitter off to maybe save battery if you aren't recording, you can press and hold the power button again. You will again feel it vibrate and the light will turn off in the front of the transmitter to signify that the transmitter is now off. Now a nice feature on the transmitter is that when you turn it on, you will feel a short vibration and when you turn it off, you will feel a long vibration. This is useful because if the transmitter is somewhere you can't see the status LED on the front, maybe inside your shirt, 
then you can know by the vibration if it is turned on or off. Now this power button can also be used to mute the microphone by double pressing it. When you do this, you will feel a short vibration and then the microphone will be muted. Now, while the microphone is muted, the recording status LED will pulse slowly red. And if you look at the speaker symbol on the receiver, it will also have a red line through it. To unmute the microphone, just double press the power button again. You will again feel a vibration. The recording status LED will stop pulsing and the speaker symbol on the receiver won't have a red line through it anymore, letting you know the microphone is no longer muted. Lastly, on the bottom of the receiver, we again have this charging pad. And again, when you insert the transmitter into the charging case, you will want to make sure it is seated properly so that the four gold dots contact the four pins on the charging case to start charging the transmitter. Now let's take a look at exactly how you use the DJI mic system with a camera or with a device such as your phone. So when you are ready to use the DJI mic system, you simply want to flip open the charging case and wait for all the lights to turn on. As mentioned previously in this guide, everything should link automatically. So you don't need to relink everything every time you pull them out of the charging case and want to start using them. Then to start, you want to remove the receiver unit. Now, if you are using a camera, you will want to have the hot shoe mount attached to the receiver and then simply attach it to the top of your camera. Then you want to get the camera audio cable and attach one end of this to the out on the receiver and the other to your camera audio input. If you are using a device such as a smartphone or action camera, simply attach the adapter with the lightning or USB-C connection to your receiver and then insert that into your device. Now, remove a transmitter from the charging case and attach the windscreen. I always recommend using the windscreen when recording outdoors to help cut out any unwanted wind noise. Then you can either clip this transmitter to your shirt or jacket, or you can use the magnet to attach the transmitter. Now I have two top tips when attaching the microphone. Firstly, if possible, you want to attach the microphone centrally on your chest, because if you attach it to the side of your chest, maybe if you attached it to a backpack strap, for example, as you turn your head away from it when talking, the audio will get quieter. And as you turn your head towards it, the audio will get louder, which can be very jarring to listen to. So as an example, you can see I have attached my microphone transmitter to the strap of my backpack. But as I turn my head away from the microphone, you can see that the audio will get quieter. And as I turn my head towards the microphone, you can see that the audio will get louder. So if you're moving your head around while talking, while recording yourself, you can see you'll get these jarring changes to the volume of your voice. Instead, you are much better mounting it centrally, if possible, to avoid this. Second, you don't want to place the microphone too high up your shirt or too close to your neck, as this will make your voice sound slightly muffled and bassy. So I recommend you place it slightly lower down for a cleaner sound. Ideally, you want the microphone to be a hand span distance from your mouth. Then you want to check that as you talk, the audio meters on the receiver are bouncing up and down. And this confirms that the audio being sent from the transmitter is being received by the receiver. And then to check that the audio is being inputted into your camera correctly, you also want to check the audio meter on your camera to confirm that it is also bouncing up and down as you speak. If you're using a mobile phone, something I recommend doing is a quick test video recording. So just record for a few seconds as you talk and then play this back to make sure that the audio is being recorded and then you are good to go. So all you have to do is make a quick video where you say one or two sentences, stop the video recording, play it back on your smartphone and just double check that the audio is firstly being recorded and secondly, that it is not getting distorted because it's too loud. If it is too loud, again, you can turn down the receiver gain or the transmitter gain. And then you know that any further recordings you make with your smartphone are going to have beautiful sounding audio. Now, when you look at the receiver screen for the first time, you might be completely overwhelmed with all the information available. But don't worry, we are now going to go through what all the icons mean and settings do. So when you first open the charging case and the receiver is still inserted, once the screen turns on, you will get this simplified information screen appear. 
On this screen, you can firstly see three battery percentage graphics. The one in the middle shows the battery level for the receiver, and the left and right graphic shows the battery level of the two transmitters either side respectively. Below that, on the left and right side, there are two folder icons with a time in hours. And this is how much backup audio recording time is left in the storage of each of the transmitters to either side. Now once you left the receiver out of the charging case, the screen will change to show more information. And again, this screen changes depending on how many transmitters you have turned on. So if you only have one transmitter turned on, you will only see one set of information for it. However, if you have both transmitters turned on, you will see two sets of information for each transmitter. Starting by looking at the top left of the screen, you will see this small M icon, and this is your recording mode. And with the DJI mic, we have three recording modes. Mono, shown by this small M icon. Mono safety channel, shown by this small yellow M icon with a shield around it. And stereo, shown by this S icon. So what are the differences between these three recording modes? How do you change them? and which one should you use? Well, at the minute we are in mono mode. And in mono mode, the audio recorded by one or both transmitters will be mixed into one channel. So if you are using both transmitters for an interview, for example, the audio from both microphones will be mixed together. To change recording mode, swipe down from the top of the screen and then tap into the recording mode, which will show as the icon of your current recording mode. And then by tapping the recording mode option on the left side, you can change into the next mode, which is mono safety channel. And once selected, you can go back to the home screen by swiping up twice in the screen. Now the mono safety channel setting is almost the same as mono, where both the one transmitter or the two transmitters recordings are mixed. The difference, however, is that on one channel, you will get that mixed recording at the volume you have set. And on the second channel, you will get the audio recorded at minus six decibels lower. And this can be useful if your main recording gets distorted due to loud sounds. Maybe as someone was talking, they all of a sudden shout it, or there was a really loud sound in the background and the audio got clipped. Well, you can use the lower safety channel recording, which won't be clipped, to recover clean audio to use for that section of your recording. This is an example of audio distortion, which can be caused by talking too loudly, shouting, or in this case, having the microphone positioned too closely to my mouth and having the receiver gain set too high. However, by using the negative six decibel mono safety channel track, clean audio can still be recovered from this recording. Lastly, if we go back to the recording mode setting by again swiping down from the top of the screen, pressing the recording mode icon and tapping the recording mode setting, we can change into stereo mode. Now in stereo mode, the audio will be separated from each microphone into the left and right channels. And on the main screen, you will see a yellow L or R icon above each transmitter to let you know which channel, L for left or R for right, that the transmitter's audio is being recorded to. Now you can change these channels around for the transmitters by going back to the recording settings menu. But this time, if you look on the right side, there is an option for choosing which transmitter goes to which channel. And when you tap this, you can choose left, right or right, left. So if we change this and go back to the home screen, you can now see the channels have changed around with transmitter one now being recorded to the right channel and transmitter two to the left channel. The big benefit of stereo mode is that when you load your audio into a video editor, you can edit the recordings from both microphones independently. And this can be really useful if in an interview, for example, the two people you were recording spoke over each other at the same time. Well, using stereo mode, you will be able to edit that to hear them more clearly. One thing to note is that if you are using only one microphone and using stereo mode, the audio will only be stored to one channel. So when you listen to your recording in your video editor with headphones, you will only hear the audio from one ear. So which recording mode should you use? Well, each mode has benefits. If you are recording one transmitter indoors or are recording somewhere there isn't going to be loud unexpected noises, then the mono recording mode will work great. If you are recording one transmitter somewhere that is noisy, or there might be unexpected loud noises, then you will be better using the mono safety channel mode, as this gives you that extra minus six decibel channel, 
that you can recover cleaner audio from should you need to. Lastly, if you are recording two transmitters, such as recording an interview, then I recommend using the stereo recording mode, as this gives you much more flexibility when editing and post, as you have a separate channel track for each person's recording. Moving on now to the next icon in the home screen, we see this plus one icon. And this is showing us the receiver gain. This is how much the audio leaving the receiver is being amplified by as it's sent to your camera. And this can be changed in the settings menu, which we will look at shortly to increase or decrease the volume of the audio the receiver is sending to your camera. Next to that, you will see numbers one and two, with graphs next to them. And this is your signal strength between the transmitters and receivers. So you can see the signal strength for transmitter one and transmitter two. If you only have one transmitter turned on, then you will only see one graph. Next to this, you will see a battery indicator on the top row. And this is showing you how much battery the receiver has. Now, if you have headphones plugged in, you will see this headphone icon appear on the top bar, letting you know that you have headphones plugged in. And if you lock the screen by pressing the power button once in the receiver so that you can't accidentally touch it and change settings without being aware of changing them settings, you will see this small locked padlock appear in the middle of the toolbar. And this is showing you that the screen is locked. When you unlock the screen again by pressing that power button once, the padlock will disappear. So all these settings along the top row are relevant to your receiver. So that's an easy way to remember that. The top row is information relevant to your receiver. Now below this, you will see information specific to the transmitters. And as mentioned, if you only have one transmitter turned on, you will only see one set of icons or two sets of icons if you have two transmitters turned on. So looking at the first icon, you will see this plus two. And this is our transmitter gain. So we can adjust the amplification or gain of the transmitter as it's being sent from that transmitter to the receiver. And I will show you how to adjust this in the transmitter settings menu later in this guide. Now you might want to change this if you are interviewing someone and they're talking very low, well then you can increase the gain to increase the volume of their voice. Or if they are talking very loud, you can decrease that gain to lower the volume of their voice. Next to that, if you have the backup audio recording on the transmitter turned on, you will see this small red recording circle and this is letting you know that the backup audio is being recorded to the transmitter. When you turn the backup audio recording off, this red recording icon will then disappear. So this will let you know which transmitter is recording backup audio simply by looking at the screen. Next to that, if in stereo recording mode, you will see the channel icon that we mentioned earlier in the guide, letting us know which channel each transmitter is being recorded to. And then to the right of that, you will see a battery icon. And this is showing you the battery level for the relevant transmitter. And each of these icons can change to green if a transmitter is inserted into the charging case to show that a transmitter is being charged. Then below this, you will see this green bar that's bouncing up and down. And this is a very important piece of information to be aware of, as this is the transmitter audio meter. And as you talk or record audio, this will be moving up and down. And the further this goes to the right, the louder the audio is that's being recorded. As the audio gets lighter and lighter, you will see that this goes into this orange section, which is an indication that the audio being recorded is too loud. And if it gets even lighter, it will then hit this red section. And this is letting you know that the audio is now so loud, it's getting clipped and will be distorted. So as an example of what distorted audio sounds like, I'm now going to talk really loudly into the microphone and you can see that that does not sound good at all. Now you can adjust this by changing the gain. So if as you're talking, the audio is hitting the yellow or red section of the audio meter, this is telling you that the audio is too loud. And to fix this, you simply want to turn the gain down. Or if as you're recording, you barely see the audio meter move, this is because the audio is too low and you can fix this by increasing the gain. So to set this correctly, Ideally, you want to aim to have the audio meter hitting the 75% mark, just touching the orange box consistently as you talk or record your audio. To the left of this audio meter, you will see this little speaker icon. And this is your muted or unmuted icon. So when I double press the power button on the transmitter, you can see the speaker icon gets a slash through it, indicating that the transmitter is now muted. 
and even though I am talking, the audio meter is no longer moving up and down. Everything is still linked and paired, but the audio is not being sent from the transmitter to the receiver. When I unmute the transmitter by double pressing the power button again, you can see that that slash disappears from the speaker icon to show that the transmitter is now unmuted and the audio meters are now moving up and down again. Now, if you swipe up on top of the transmitter information, you will get a menu showing you information for that specific transmitter. So if you have two mic transmitters turned on, swiping up on the left side brings up the menu for transmitter one and swiping up on the right side brings up the menu for transmitter two. On the left side of this new screen, you will see a small yellow icon saying TX1 if you are in the menu for transmitter 1 or TX2 if you are in the menu for transmitter 2. Now this button on the left side which has REC written on it which stands for recording allows you to turn on the backup audio recording. So when you press this and the REC icon turns red the backup recording for that transmitter is now on. If you press it again that backup recording will turn off. In the middle, this speaker icon is the mute and unmute button for the transmitter. And on the right side, this folder icon will show you in hours how much backup audio recording space is on the transmitter. Now, if you want to empty the storage of the transmitter and remove the audio recordings, maybe if the storage is full, then you can click that folder icon and then press the red format button. And this will delete everything off the transmitter. But before you do this, you want to make sure you have downloaded the audio off the transmitter because once you format it, then recordings will be gone forever. So be very, very careful. To get back to the home screen, simply swipe down from the top twice. So now that we have covered everything you might see on the receiver home screen, let's now dive into the settings menu and look at what all the options are and how to change them. So to access the settings menu, you simply want to swipe down on the home screen. Now you can move between these options by swiping right or left in the screen. So we have already looked at the recording mode settings. So let's swipe from right to left once across the receiver gain option until it's highlighted and then simply tap into it. Now in here is where you change your receiver gain, which is the amplification being applied to the audio leaving the receiver and going to your camera. You can increase this by sliding this bar up to boost the volume or decrease it by sliding this bar down to decrease the volume. To go back to the main menu, simply swipe up. Swiping right again, we have our headphone volume option. Again, you can swipe right or left on this bar to increase or decrease the volume of the audio in the headphones attached to your receiver. Then the next option across is the transmitter settings icon. And when you tap this, you will get taken into a further additional menu where we can adjust a few settings for the microphone transmitters themselves. The first option you will see is the low cut filter. Now, if this is turned on, sounds that are 150 hertz or lower will be filtered out, and this can cut out vibrations, rumbling, and surrounding noise. So for this reason, I recommend that you turn this on to get cleaner audio. Next, you have the transmitter gain option. And when you press into here, you will see an option for transmitter one and transmitter two. And you can see how much gain is being applied to each transmitter. Now you can adjust this by tapping on the left or right side for the relevant transmitter you want to adjust and then increase or decrease this slider to boost the audio being sent from the transmitter to the receiver or decrease it. The next option we have is recording stop lock. Now when this is turned on, once you start the audio backup recording with the button on the side of the transmitter, you won't be able to turn it off using that button again. And this prevents you from accidentally pressing it and stopping the recording by accident. When recording stop lock is on, the only way to stop the audio backup recording is by going back to the home screen, swiping up in the transmitter information and pressing the stop recording button, or by placing the transmitter back into the charging case. Personally, I like being able to stop the recording using the button on the side of the transmitter, so I leave this set to off. Next, we have auto audio record. When this is turned on, the transmitter will automatically start internal recording as soon as it turns on. I personally leave this off as I only really use the backup audio recording when I know I'm going to be really far away from the camera and want to have that backup in case the audio cuts out. So I don't need the transmitter doing an internal recording all the time when it's on. And then we have the vibration notification setting. Now when this is turned on, the transmitter will vibrate when you turn it on and off, mute the recordings, 
and when you turn on or off the backup audio recording. But if you set this to off, your transmitter will no longer vibrate. Again, I recommend keeping this on because getting a vibration as feedback when you change a setting is really useful, especially if your transmitter is inside your shirt, for example, and you can't see the status LEDs. Moving on to the next setting, we have LED brightness, and this controls the brightness of the status and recording status LEDs on the transmitter. In here, you have two settings, full brightness and lower brightness. Swiping up out of the transmitter settings now to get back to the general settings menu, if we swipe across, we get one more settings menu. Tapping into this takes us to the global settings menu. And the first option in here is to link devices. Now, when you tap into here, you can see if the transmitters are linked or not. A yellow link icon next to transmitter one or two shows that that specific transmitter is linked to the receiver. If it shows as a white linked icon, that means the transmitter is on linked. Now, as mentioned earlier, to link a transmitter, you want to press the link button on the side of that transmitter until the status LED starts blinking, and then tap this link button. Press confirm, and after a few seconds, everything will now be linked. Going back and across to the next option, we have the screen brightness setting, and here you can increase or decrease the brightness of the receiver screen by swiping up or down on this bar. Next, we have an option to change the language of the information on the screen. We can also go in and change the date or time. We can do a factory reset, although be careful if you do this as it will completely erase your preferences and reset everything back to their default values. Lastly, you can press into here to find out information such as your firmware version. Now on screen now, I'm going to put a quick cheat sheet of the settings I recommend you should use to get the highest quality and cleanest audio possible from the DJI mic system. So feel free to pause this video and write them down or take a screenshot so that you can reference these when you're setting up your own DJI mic. Quickly now, let's take a look at how you download the audio backup recordings off the transmitter and clear the storage so that you can keep using the audio backup feature without the storage becoming full. So once you have recorded your audio backups and you want to download them off the transmitter, simply attach your transmitter to your computer via the USB-C port on the side of the transmitter. And once connected, you will see a new storage space become available. And if you click into this, you will then see all of your recordings. Then you can simply download them onto your computer storage. Now, once you've copied them across, you can either delete all the files in this folder to clear your transmitter storage, or in the receiver screen, swipe up in the relevant transmitter to bring up the transmitter settings menu, press the storage icon on the right side, and then press format. Again, I want to stress that it's important to make sure that you have copied your audio files first, because when you format the storage, then files will be gone for good. Lastly, I just wanted to show you how you do a firmware update on your DJI mic system. Occasionally, DJI brings out firmware updates for the DJI mic that fixes bugs or adds new features. For example, this firmware update added recording stop lock, auto audio record and LED brightness options. So to check if you need a firmware update, you first want to go to the DJI mic downloads page and I will put a link on the screen and down below on the description that you can use to get to this page and then compare the firmware versions for the receiver and transmitter to the ones you have installed. You can find these by going to the settings menu on the receiver by swiping down on the home screen, going across to the settings and then going across to the version button. And in here, you can see the receiver version. And if you swipe right, you can see the transmitter firmware version. So as you can see here, my receiver and transmitter firmware is actually out of date. So we need to update them. Now to do this on the DJI mic firmware website page, you want to download the receiver and transmitter firmware. Then start by connecting your receiver to your computer via a USB-C cable and the USB-C port on the side of it. And once connected, you want to copy the downloaded receiver firmware to the root directory of the receiver. After you've done that, disconnect your receiver from your computer and it will automatically start updating. You can check this by looking at the screen on the receiver and you should see an updating message appear. Once this message disappears, the device will then be updated. Just be aware though that after the update is complete, the device will be restored to its default settings. Next, connect the transmitters one by one, 
and again copy the transmitter firmware to the root directory of the device. Then again disconnect the transmitter and the update will automatically start. During the transmitter update the status LEDs will flash green and red and once this is stopped the transmitter has been updated. Finally, you can confirm your DJI mic system is now running the latest firmware by again going back to the version settings option and checking the firmware version against the versions listed on the DJI mic downloads website page. If they match, then you are good to go. Now, if the update fails, simply download the firmware files again, restart the receiver and transmitters, and then repeat the steps we just talked through. So all that's left for you to do is to hook up your DJI mic to your camera or smartphone and start capturing high quality audio. And hopefully this beginner's guide has helped you get up and running quickly. Now before you go, if you like this video and learned something new, please let me know by giving me the thumbs up and clicking that like button down below. And if you love all things action cameras, drones, gimbals and more, and want to know how to get more cinematic videos and better images with your camera gear, then I recommend you check out my channel where I have a ton of other content to help you level up your game. If you don't want to miss any of my upcoming tutorials, then I recommend you subscribe to my channel by clicking that subscribe button down below. And while you're down there, make sure to check that notification bell so that you will be alerted when my new videos are released. It would be greatly appreciated. And if you want to stick around and watch a few more of them tutorials now, here's a few I personally recommend. I'll not keep you back any further. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you over there.